before coming to uh, the U.S., I was in uh, Chengdu, and I presented at the uh, ICCMR, the International Congress of Complementary Medical Researchers. Uh, what was amazing, and I think what, what, what is unique about that environment, is that these participants, many of them uh, Chinese, were doing science. And what we call traditional Chinese medicine is virtually absent in China. There is a new movement in China, which is basically about science. And I'm an advocate of using scientific approach to that. I'm, uh, I often look at colleagues who are presenting in terms of uh, Chinese herbal medicine and see a lecture or a seminar that nary has one reference or source in it, and I find that offensive. We in Chinese medicine need to do science. We need to do something that is sourced and has references and is within the mainstream. I believe that Chinese medicine has an enormous impact and can make a major contribution to patient well-being within the context of oncology. Integrative medicine is the medicine in which people participate as equals in the treatment of disease, and in this case with oncology. This uh, seminar uh, here, this, these few notes that I have, um, I'm not going to go through them, but I want you to just see the way in which we need to approach these issues. You know, we look at cancer. Cancer is not just a single disease, but it is in fact a whole uh, there are several hundred different kinds of cancers. Cancer is not a, a bad thing. It is simply uh, cells that are trying to survive. There are evolutionary reasons there are, uh, that within the context of that. A tumor is actually an organ. It is cut off from the rest of the body and is producing and surviving. Paget, uh, uh, as, as well as Claude Bernard, talked about not just the pathogenic factors, but, but there is an environment of the body. The whole body is a system, and when there is an impediment to the functioning of that body, pathological factors occur. Cancer is just a pathological factor where there is a failure within a systemic whole to manage uh, aberrant cell structures. Um, probably everybody has cancer to one degree or another, but tumors don't develop in most of us simply because there is not the environment in which that can take place. So looking at some of these things, here's a quotation in the slide about Bernard, and he was well before its time uh, in regard to understanding the nature of the body as the source of these issues. Inflammation in cancer is pretty important. There have been so many studies, and we go back to Birkhoff uh, in uh, German physician in the 19th century again, who said that tumors are nothing but wounds that do not heal, that uh, tumors uh, subvert and use the immune system as a wound does to continue their growth factors. So we have this historical relevance about tumors and cancer. Uh, some of these slides I don't metastases is simply a function of tumors trying to promote growth, just as a wound does. Metastases upregulates a number of inflammatory factors. And it is important to recognize that these inflammatory factors can be treated. Chinese medicine, in, in its entirety, looks at systems and treats the systems. And a lot of the medicines that we use are uh, anti-inflammatories. Uh, evolution, you know, this is what I said before. Tumors exist to survive. They are not bad things. They are simply cells that are trying to survive in a hostile environment. And then we look at some of the things called the Warburg effect. And the Warburg effect is that cells are trying to survive in an environment that's hypoxic. Acid, hypoxic, there is low oxygen levels, there is an acid environment, there are inflammatory factors. All of this gives rise to cells trying to survive, and they mutate. Cancer cells are primitive cells. They are cells that existed prior to uh, the current environment of high oxygen and a more alkaline environment. 
Um, it is simply a consequence of damage to the mitochondria of the cancers. Cancers are simply trying to survive. The, the fact that the tumor kills the host is irrelevant to the tumor. Blood stasis is also a factor in there. When we look at tumors, we see that tumors are driven, they use inflammation, they use the uh, immune system, and they activate uh, this uh, BEGF, uh, endothelial growth factor. And one of the ways in which they survive is that they develop their own blood supply. A tumor of a million cells cannot exist will go into apoptosis unless it develops its own blood supply. Now, a million cells is about the size of a head of a pin, microtuber. It has to develop its own blood supply. And the number of ways in which it does it is by doing hypoxia, by inflammatory factors, and by blood stasis from a TCM point of view. That is, that it, the, uh, the blood is changed, the blood supply is changed in that factor. Um, the coagulation system is one of the things that we test when we're looking at tumors. If there is a high coagulation factor, this drives tumors much more actively and is likely to enter into a, a metastases. Um, there, I have here a, a classical formulation on one of the slides that was done by uh, Subuti uh, about eight years ago. This is a classical formulation that's used to break up blood. And again, if you look at a tumor, it, it is a microenvironment. It is sealed off. It has positive interstitial pressure, which is one of the reasons why it, is, it, it resists any kind of therapeutic intervention, whether it's chemotherapy or herbs, this positive pressure. But inside is this hypoxic acid environment with stagnant blood. And this kind of blood stasis is one of the factors that drives VEGF. Uh, in that. And so by using blood busting herbs from the TCM point of view, you can actually begin to, to uh, alter the capacity of that tumor to drive the uh, angiogenesis. Herbs in oncology, there are a number of herbs, and there's a great number of, of uh, research sources, both in China and in the West, that indicate Chinese herbs are, have a significant impact on not just on the tumors themselves, but also in cooperation with uh, chemotherapeutic and uh, radiotherapeutic uh, interventions. Many Chinese herbs actually make more effective, more efficacious uh, medical oncology uh, interventions. <coughs> so it's important to recognize that it in itself is very positive. Um, there are a number of uh, substances. I want to just look at some of these uh, Later slides, we look at some of the uh, herbs that are involved in this and some of the research that has been done with that in terms of increasing, increasing sensitivity to chemo radi radiotherapeutics. Um, also, I work a lot with uh, isolates because I, there are a number of reasons. One is isolates are very predictable in their results. They have a much more impactful uh, in, uh, effect on tumors. They're easy to measure in terms of doing research both in vivo and vitro. Also, uh, herbs, we're not doing um, uh, wild crafting of herbs, and herbs are now much weaker in their impact. So using isolates makes them sense, but combine them with herbs. So some of the studies here on uh, these kind of isolates, we're looking at uh, ursolic acid. Ursolic acid is a incredibly safe isolate that is an extract from Biowat Chichurza and very useful in combination with the medical oncology. So there are a couple of studies there done with Paxil and Cisplatin. Uh, and genistein, for example, is another isolate that is very, very useful in, in, in combination with medical oncology. We as uh, uh, integrative oncologists Thank you. <laughs> we need to find ways and pathways in which we can engage the whole process. And I believe that there is enough research to, to uh, be part of that kind of team. But we need to do it via research. We need to do it via uh, some evidence of efficacy. 
And lastly, cancer is, is a complex disease that is not just a result of pathogenic factors. There are many social factors, spiritual factors involved. And it is not to lay blame to the patient who has cancer, but rather to recognize it is a systemic disease that goes beyond <coughs> just simply the patient, but also all of its relationships and its society. Thank you. Thank you.